hi guys welcome to litmus chaos con uh, and, and and thank you for joining the you know session with me my name is tejendra bhandari i come from nokia i have been a chaos engineer tester architect and uh, accelerator for small uh, uh, products of my own with chaos and i've been working in chaos from uh, probably multiple years i am working as a security lead architect for nokia i am you can find me on cncf other con 42 uh, you know litmus medium con and then uh, uh, various other channels and i generally speak more about chaos and security so today also i'm going to you know uh, push my views or probably you know, showcase my understanding how the frameworks of chaos with genai are taking you know, in place so a short description about myself i am a, a graduate post graduate of business administration from indian institute of management lucknow and a bachelor degree in mechanical and been working in 16 years from past 16 years with it in it with various companies as you see I generally have started my journey in cloud from 2012 onwards uh, with various uh, you know uh, organizations within services products uh, currently working as a cybersecurity architect where I am also using resiliency as a charter for APG and Latin regions with me and as i said i have been attached to chaos uh, from multiple years now so there are multiple areas which are in you know a, a revolution and i see chaos as one of the revolutionary idea and a method for you know uh, making the system more resilient my contributions are current in line current landscape is with you know uh, the engineering teams the cxo ctos for various organizations which are trying to build the resiliency and bringing the you know platforms in a more resilient and robust way where their applications can run smoothly without any hindrances so those are the you know uh, contributions i've been working with a lot of media uh, bfsi and uh, air force and government organizations uh, for various uh, you know, uh, countries for chaos and resilient areas and currently as i said i have been working with r&d and engineering team with devops and basically contributing towards you know to creating an application or a product which can actually uh, are built with you know, their cell phones so uh, moving on what do you expect from this presentation today i'll have this presentation in a very quick format for chaos because we all are aware as as i understand we all engineers are aware of what is chaos these days and why are we here and what is there in this presentation is basically how i have leveraged genai and created chaos as a you know a, a, a set of experiments with their in build uh, knowledge and experiments within the system and how we are using it how we are reducing the uh, you know uh, noise in the system and also uh, parallelly you know uh, uh, creating a level creating it for you know uh, uh, towards the larger landscape of the organization when i say larger it is basically multiple services teams can pick it up and then can run it with genia so uh, some of the areas would be focusing on telecom because this project which we are right now uh, i will showcase the uh, you know frameworks is being utilized towards the project which uh, products which we are working with nokia in nokia towards other clients and how can you utilize this uh, information or probably the architecture for your chaos and gen ai i don't know next so what is what is chaos engineering it's a uh, we all know that we we create hypotheses we design experiments we push these experiments towards the system we learn how the system is responded and then if there are faults present in the system how we fix it so it's a, it's a basic definition but what is chaos the genai and why do we need it so does it you know sell faster with adding a gen ai with it or does it sound attractive as a new age solution because chaos itself is a new age solution but adding gen ai will help you more uh, 
these are some context which you give for a business perspective where you do you know you want to pitch chaos in your organization or your your service based organization to other customers how do you sell it or probably does it make any sense even to talk chaos with gen ai because this is the journey which is getting started with gen ai and it's it's a beautiful journey when i when i'll showcase you how we are using it and how the architecture look like it it will give you more perspective do you have more leverage when you see you know finally you are using gen ai with chaos do you see more leverage of you know using chaos across organization or does it limit us does any cost impact happens to this or you know any business impact which you can actually you know portray in a positive or a negative manner uh, to sell this internally because right now we are also building so it may happen to be you know it's a tough sell for customer internal and external both or the, do you think that it's a top notch selling pitch for you know, customers or internal customers so when we finally understand this you know chaos we already all, all of us know it with gen ai if it works or not then you can become a good ai so what is there with security right i am focusing more on security with chaos so basically when we have monoliths coming to you know uh, uh, so microservices based uh, architecture how we are pushing faults in the system we are exposing these faults we are you know exposing passwords we are having access control issues we are having some issues which are you know pushing the application in a backward direction whether whether you don't know even it there are some configurations which are missed or there are engineers which are changing the configurations and you do not have any control over it so there could be multiple vulnerabilities which can expose your application or infrastructure to a threat so there are multiple uh um, yeah. moving to the next slide is basically i have captured some of the you know experiments which are related to security there are multiple multiple experiments but you have to simulate or create your own experiment based on your uh, uh, you know architecture so i just pushed some can, uh, scenarios here how do you model those experiments or can you use open source forum or litmus using the uh, build uh, you know experiment of your own so basically there there has to be a framework you can all build experiments and try running these experiments and can you know find some uh, uh, issues with your um, uh, infrastructure layer or application layer network layer any layer but then how do you use it with gen ai so i am trying to propose some frameworks where it may help you to you know build a thought around your uh, landscape because this is something very new which we have tried and started functioning quite well and we are thinking to you know uh, move in this direction so do, we do not have uh, you know uh, uh, various services to come and ask us it could be a gen ai you ask about and then it it pushes your fault in the system and see how these faults are built it is not uh, as easy as it looks but yes it can be doable that's that's the main thought of this presentation so in nokia what we are doing it's a, it's a it's it's a topology where you know it's all telecom i i i wish uh, i could you know uh, dwell on more telecom side but right now we are more uh, focused on chaos the gen ai so if you see uh, we call it in nokia as netguard cyber security doom it's a it's a uh, it's a applic it's a product which you know uh, get the threats on the go and then uh, your source systems your application are fully secured and the analytics which works behind it will get the threats out in the system before it reaches to multiple you know uh, 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 touch points in the system uh, you can actually get it beforehand and then can block it so then it's it's a xdr where you find detect and respond to any threat which is present in the system the platform which we are using is microsoft azure for our uh, uh, application agent set setting on prem or cloud we we do it both the ways we also have analytics threat intelligence as i said we train the system with the uh, telecom expertise with uh, via various ll methods now we have introduced chaos with automation and gen ai here so 
what it brings it brings basically a, a, a remedial action or you can say a attack into the system where we do generally attack in you know uh, uh, with chaos experiments manually or probably by some automation here we have introduced uh, ai assistant trained uh, chaos experiment we have feeded the experiments internally and then we are building the assistant to you know uh, learn more and more throughout the experiments its results the outcomes the experiments are basically becoming you know on the go so for example you say hey bot to to i'll show you the ui hey bot can you run this uh, uh, network ddos attack on this particular source and it will run this uh, run this on your one click it it will it will adhere to your uh, policies it will adhere to your inputs it will adhere to your uh, raw logs which are coming and then build it based on your uh, you know uh, source system capabilities and then we'll attack the system and see and tell what has happened in the system how can you even you know remediate or take an action on it so how we are leveraging it is in telecom domain is basically to you know, ease a soc analyst journey so soc analyst is you know being a soc analyst is like a nightmare uh um, you you're sitting on the system the threats are coming and then you know you are choosing which one is more uh, uh threatening to your system you start preparing the you know incidents then you try to learn what kind of incidents these were what has it affected into the system is is these systems are already mapped with meter attacks then you decide it takes a lot of effort and pain to Uh, you know go through this journey so we are trying to remediate it we are trying to you know build something where a soc analyst will say hey this is a threat which has some score the score is probably say out of 10 it is 6 can i wait for it can i block do i do i want to actually you know take some action along it and if someone says you know hey a bot comes and says this is a 6 uh, uh you know uh, ranking threat it can impact these many places in your system you should take in you should take these four options uh, first option would be the best the second would be this third and fourth along these path so think of it that you are you are being guided being you know if you are not a even a telco or a, any any other domain expert and you are being guided from a genai assistant stating that this kind of threat based on these attacks are can harm your system in multiple ways so you can choose these actions so that it can be stopped so um, uh, i know this sounds a bit of you know uh, uh, interesting but how do we build how do we build a model to actually create you know this so there are multiple uh, stages to a chaos scenario which can be you know built as a gen ai model so basically when you design a design a scenario right you generate scenarios you identify risks so basically llm large language model to automatically generate a variety of chaos scenarios for you you can also load lot of scenarios based on your uh, uh, understanding and uh, you know the old scenarios which you have based on the description of the system the prompt will you know uh, create a network failure or a ddos or any kind of attack which i said you know and then the llm will analyze the documentation logs or basically you know it will it will use a lot of intelligence which you have already given to it to bring a potential failure point or risk to your uh, uh, eye and then you know uh, these failures or these risk can can uh, can be used to design a scenario for you now once you have gone through all those challenges and then you push that information into the system you created some some you know knowledge around the experiments and then outcomes and then threats right then you try to configure and load the experiments when you configure you provide the llm you know the experiment objectives and suggestions for configurations or parameters for chaos uh, experiments right it will it will create those configurations for you you can load these uh, uh, experiments in the system and can generate snippets or scripts that that uh, for setting up your or executing your chaos scenarios and especially when you are integrating with tools from third parties probably litmus or gremlin or monkey chaos monkey or any other tool right this will have the data backed up and then 
a lot of knowledge is also coming so uh, llm or a model can you know learn more so basically uh, once you make the system automated or configurations in place then you try to simulate when you simulate you induce faults for instance an image recognition system the llm could you know generate slightly modified description of that image and then can lead to a incorrect classification right so you you induce fault or probably when you create a, a chain of scenarios say for example i want to you know test my pods then i want to attack the security then i want to actually you know uh, uh, test the systems uh, uh, load balancers and these kind of chain based scenarios you can come and say that you know this is the place where you know uh, i want to induce a fault with these parameters and with this performance or stress test model your nlp based system your large language model or you know uh, complex scenarios with ambiguous or misleading test text inputs or uh, uh, any faults which you have induced will test the system how it handles in linguistic challenges or in simulation challenges then once you once you push the thread what next that's the most important thing when you monitor and response right that's that's the place where you most of the places you know chaos engineers or team doesn't know what to do with these kind of results right are these threats to me are these errors in my system so these model can assist you in real time by monitoring or analyzing the logs or matrices or any output which you are you, which which is which is as you know a, a, a response to your system can detect the anomalies during the chaos experiments and then for example um, these monitoring logs can identify unusual patterns for you somebody is trying to you know peep into your system which is not usual so it will try to analyze those situations and can indicate the system is failing or someone is you know uh, malfunctioning or probably you know uh, peeping in your system the adaptation of these models become more and more when you try to push a lot of responses in real time and then these observations can train better to your system there there are a lot of uh, uh, flows behind this particular uh, uh, you know learning and simulation and then adaptation but then yes this can be done using a lot of uh, uh, areas uh, uh, from services also from cloud so yeah so now uh, once you have pushed monitor and then you try to interpret it right what is the anal analysis of this output how do i recognize our patterns so basically after running a chaos experiment your llms will summarize the results highlight the key findings anomalies and then you know uh, potential root causes for the uh, the failure and then it will summarize the outcome uh, explained with the ai system right that uh, these system th the system is under threat and these are the failure conditions um probably let's say uh, if there is a, any unusual login detection that is happening in the system based on your potential root causes the system can generate a threat with a severity or a score right and can alarm the system or a sock analyst that this is why it is failing and it it this is the this is this is basically a trained mechanism where you can say that a mitigation or threat is done accordingly so it will recognize all the patterns the llm model is trained in such a manner that you know the patterns can uh, and the rules defined uh, to mitigate right uh, can pitch in earlier and the overall system can be uh, safe from uh, this threat to be you know surpassed multiple other services it can stop it there or further action on you know uh, um, uh it can be taken so basically what happens right the patterns the rules defined and mitigated uh, uh earlier can be used to for the train or all, all over the system and can perform the actions uh, uh based on your uh, uh potential root causes or analyze the large volumes of experiments data to identify the patterns with the correlations that might not be immediately apparent uh, uh, but it can harm your system largely so these this is the way you you model your ai experiments with ai your uh, sorry model your chaos experiments with ai so now how are we using it there is it's a small snippet uh, of our topology where you know we have security twin security observability uh, these are all uh, uh, telecom based uh, you know pam uh, uh, nms users and all are telecom based uh, keynotes but uh, keywords but i will 
try to be a bit simpler. We have chaos with Gen AI, as I said. We we use top security use cases to catalog all these specific incidents and response off the shelf. We do a threat scoring, uh, which is static and dynamic both. It's based on the system uh, uh, understanding how we are defining the threat score based on our static is basically when you have uh, defined uh, data from the backend and the and dynamic is basically how you are feeding the system on the current move you know with logs and all those analytics we, we define a score for starting and dynamic and we create a score and with this ai assistant model uh, if you see on the right hand side there is an ai bot which is running and it says that this is an incident you know which has happened and based on the understanding and uh, data it has it will create some uh, uh, useful knowledge for you so what is the architecture which we have used so basically we have uh, knowledge stores uh, lms orchestration and intelligent agents which are sitting these are interacting internally with each other we are giving a lot of uh, custom data modules and uh, you know vector dbs to feed the information the application is created on xdr uh, uh, you know threat detection response model and based on this, the topology with sitting with the agents will understand the incidents and can share with you. So the standard regulations of the threats for our security standards and chaos experiments intelligence, where we feed in a lot of information, a lot of threats, modules, and experiments, it becomes more knowledgeable. And with LLM orchestration, it helps in refining the use cases day by day. And it understands where it has to run if it's on your command or if it is scheduled. So uh, it's a lot of intelligence which is pushed behind and then uh, there is a model which comes in and generate chaos uh, for the uh, current system and then gives useful outputs as we see in manual ways, right? How we do it. It is, it is same but uh, in a faster method. Um, uh, I will go to a very small snippet for use case, how use case are being created. So there are two pipelines which are created. One is for training and the other is for inferencing. The first training pipeline is created with, you know, uh, the, say for example, a raw log data is coming to you and any other cloud providers log analytics is being planned with that log, raw logs. And we are, we are pushing that into a understandable table or a format. These CSP decision, the CSP here means cloud service providers. They, these cloud providers will have their, you know, multiple service apps. You can use any, if say, for example, Azure, it could have logic apps and all. So you can do a logical analytics there and then push the data into the containers. These containers will again push the, the understandable data or the readable data uh, to push to a ML app, the machine learning app training model pipelines. And then these trained ML uh, model, right, in CSPs were pushed into a inference pipeline. So basically what we do, we uh, bef before use case pipeline creation, create a, we create a relevant ML structure, uh, infrastructure, basically uh, connection setups within the storages, resources, network, source, apps, et cetera. So there are a lot of uh, logical binding behind it has been done. Then we create templates for log analytics. And then uh, in creation of log analytics templates, we create structured data so that it, it can it can be used for application in, to make some inferences. We create schedules. Uh, so so every 10 minutes, five minutes, two minutes, whatever the, whatever the logical uh, inferences you can take for the data, it will pull up the data. And then these data would be rolled up. These uh, would be rolled up to analytics. It would be utilized in such a manner that the raw data can be understandable by the uh, uh, machines now. Once the data is ingested successfully, your decision uh, or the service app which you are modeling, right? Uh, the DB can utilize this uh, machine learned data pointing towards the storage or container that data for, for further processing. So one layer is basically to train your data, and the other layer is to to uh, other layer is to inference that uh, you know data which you have already trained. So basically, or lastly, basically, you know, uh, you inference the use of these pipelines. Once you have dot, uh, data with logical assets created in the system, you can access to it or authorize it or verify it to time to create your model, basically. Basically, core AI ML use case can be developed using these training or inferencing pipelines. And such models will help you to generate predictions. Uh, and these predictions will go to your app, which is sitting on any cloud, which uh, 
inherits the data and the ML uh, infrastructure or power and then push it to your application. Uh, I, I am trying to be a bit simpler because all these are generic. So I am trying to you know push these generic understanding to you so that you can create a case according to you. I think there is a five minutes left. I will not use case this because I have told this basically uh, a threat detection model with uh, how we can inference the data and then create playbooks and then basically take out some reference and uh, you know uh, uh, generate some knowledge to your chaos experiments. So I'll not go through this, but I'll take uh, five minutes for answering the questions. It would be more relevant and interactive. So. Thank you for you know uh, listening to me and sharing your time with me. And let's take some questions now. Um, so one of yes. the first questions is: um, Is Nokia part of the CNCF Telco Working Group? So there, are, um, I haven't been uh, in contact with these people because the organization is too vast. Uh, there are a lot of R and D, and so, because I come from a, a place where you know. Uh, my my domain is basically uh, security for some of the Nokia products, but the organization is very large. Uh, it it could be a part. I'm not sure of it. Okay, no worries. Um, <laughs> another question that was asked. Um, so they they asked how much cost estimation to implement chaos engineering in the VM level around hundreds with Gen AI, and what's the ROI? Um, so. Yeah. So basically, money. Money is what what people look right. So that's why I told. Does it sound like you know a, a, a hot selling piece to your organization? There is an investment, which is sure, but it will be uh, it will be in uh, it will be a, a sinusoidal curve because once you start creating Gen AI with apps, right? There was a cloud cost. There is a, a engineering cost. There is a time cost, which is invested, but if you look at the larger picture, the the cost settles down in some uh, in in some time because this these experiments are then you know leverage, can be leveraged with various applications on the go. These models are internal to your product, and these products when you are pushing the customer right, the the enthusiasm they see the cost they want to bear it right. You you can't imagine they they you can sell it at two x three x four x whatever you want. The comfort, the SOC analyst, which I which I told in my presentation, the SOC analyst is paid highest amount in any threat uh, 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 in any security model because he's the person who is being you know uh, there are 24/7 uh, teams which are working as SOC analyst and trying to mitigate the risks which are there in the system and trying to trying to divert the risk to multiple teams and it takes a lot of men efforts hours and knowledge base both so so it's 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 roi comes in a later stages but it is beautiful when you see a chaos experiment going live with your gen ai that's what i can say and business uh, business buys it on the way i have been selling chaos engineering in multiple uh, other organizations earlier in my career, but it takes top to bottom or bottom to top approach to sell it, and it is very harder. But when you say it's working with Gen AI, you can you do not have to shell out the money for your teams uh, in respect of chaos engineering. They'll say, okay, if it's a free, let's try it. Okay, that's that's amazing. <laughs> um, last question that Arvin just asked: How do you deal with the false positives or specific conditions that are part of the code base? Is it solely handled at the LLM LL level? So, uh, good question. So, basically, what happens, right? The false positives is our only uh, method to try the system if it is breaking or not. The false positives in the codes are application level layer. So, what we do is basically we create some threat scenarios which are specifically for applications so you get a lot of uh, you know falls out of the system in that particular area and then if for example you say this is not a threat to me it becomes un learned by the model again the model will never push it back and say you know this is a very low threat score and after some time it will become uh, a, a positive for it so basically it would be it would be trained in such a manner that the next time or the fourth time or fifth time it occurs the system will automatically understand that this is not a threat for me. 
so the code base also also being you know uh, traversed because the, all the data you feed it to llm right it 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 try to learn it more and more based on your actions awesome that's cool and we're kind of we're waiting for the next presenters to join back the backstage here so one question i had you know just you kind of highlighted some of this but you know if you think about nokia in 2 years like what what do you think that vision looks like from here? What and what you already presented seems so in the future, but it's amazing you have it today. Um, but yeah, yes. anything in your crystal ball for the future? Yes, uh, Nokia, the product with Cybertoom, uh, which I just presented, it's an awesome product, which is a leap ahead from the generations because it works on Gen AI and LLM based models, which are trained day by day. A lot of uh, uh, threat models for telecom and uh, generic cases are being trained and the systems are getting more resilient for, with the threats and secured with the threats. So it, it it is basically static and dynamic both ways. Nokia is, you know, uh, hitting hard on the uh, uh, threats which are there in the system or coming into the system. So Nokia, as I see, uh, it would be great. But chaos with Gen AI, I want to love, I want to hear it more from other folks that they have they are building something which Gen AI can you know help it uh, to move chaos more ahead. Awesome. Well, I love the presentation and the questions. I think we're gonna have to have like another litmus webinar on this topic because it's generating so much excitement. Um, but thank you for today and your time. Appreciate it and talk to you in the future here. So thanks, man. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you.